welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Hopalong Cassidy. Original air date is October 14th, 1950, and the title is Hoppy Pays a Debt. Let's get into it, and thanks for listening. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Hoppy pays a debt. early days of the West, when you wanted to learn all about a fellow you're planning to do business with, you generally head for the local bank. The banker is not just a man to care for your earnings. He knows folks' troubles and their secrets. So Hoppy in California, riding down the dusty main street to the Bills Corners Bank to check the credit of a new Bar 20 customer. A cloud of alkali dust swells about them as they stop, tie off at the hitching rail, and enter the bank. Mr. Kittle has his own office right back in this corner. I hope he ain't gone home. It's kind of late. I don't think so. Oh, it looks like he's busy. He'll sit down. Wait a minute. Be right with you. No hurry. Hey, this is a pretty fancy setup. Hmm. I wish we had banks like this around the bar 20. Yes, <laughs> go on home, Steve. There's nothing you can do about it now. There's plenty I can do, Mr. Kittle. That's fight and talk, Steve. I aim it to be. Don't think I ain't obliged to you, sir. I'm just going to have to work it out my way. Now, think it over, my boy. Your way means serious trouble. Goodbye, Mr. Kittle. Thanks again. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I... Why, Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. Why, I hardly knew you without my glasses. Howdy, Mr. Kittle. Well, what on earth brings you here? Been about 12 years since I laid eyes on you. Fifteen, to be exact. Um... I don't want to be prying, Mr. Kittle, but that boy that just went out. Oh, old man Henderson's boy. Not his own flesh and blood, you know. Oh, why, darn, Hoppy, we know Henderson. Yeah. You mean this is the button who survived the shooting at Squaw Creek? Yep. Old man Henderson took him in and did for him like he would his own. Uh, he ain't no trouble, is he? Well, I'm afraid he is. He got mixed up with that crowd at the Black Deuce Cafe. Come out owing $10,000 gambling debt. Hmm. Seems like he's got a mind of his own. Yeah, that's the trouble, Hoppy. I've been a trying to keep him straight. But if his father learns of this latest affair, he'll disown him proper. The, uh, this black deuce, I don't place it. New outfit moved in and took over. Fellow by the name of Bates, Blackie Bates. Well, now, can't we do something to help the boy, Hoppy? Not much he can do with that boy, California. I don't believe that. Get a boy on the right trail, and there's good in all of them. Well, I've done all I could. He's up to his boot tops in trouble with Blackie Bates, which is just another way of saying he's asking for a belly full of lead. Oh, well, here, have a chair. Care for a cigar? What can I do for you? Just checking a little on a fellow's credit, but that can wait. Something more important needs attention. You mean the Henderson youngin? Yeah. I kind of hate to see a young fellow walk into trouble wearing blinkers. Uh, come on, California. Where are you bound for, Hoppy? Well, since I've never met this, uh, Blackie Bates, I guess now's as good a time as any. Well, more than likely you'll find Blackie back in his private office. Thanks, Mr. Kittle. See you later. Mm, I like it's not the ruckus has already started. Yeah, they have to shoot in the Squaw Creek. So his real folks gunned down. Well, too late to have them. But come on, I'm going to make up for that now. <laughs>
back to Hop Along Cassidy and Hoppy Pays the Debt. <laughs> Young Steve Henderson of the Bar Over H Ranch has become involved with the crowd at Blackie Bates' Black Deuce Cafe. Old man Henderson is a friend of Hoppy's, so Hoppy feels it's up to him to see that young Henderson gets a fair deal. Hoppy in California followed the young man to the Black Deuce Cafe. <laughs> so this is the Black Deuce Cafe. Yeah. Looks like a bad place to start trouble. Kittle said Beach's office was in the bank. This hall to our left must go back there. Hey, one of his guns will guard in the hall. Don't see young Henderson anywhere out here. We'd better go on back. I'm right with you, Hoppy. We have to trick this guard, saves noise. He sees us coming. Hold up there, partner. Ain't nobody allowed back in this hallway. We have to see Bates. What for? It's awful important. Ain't nobody going back there. He's busy. Got a mighty important message for Blackie here. Yeah? Let's see the message. Where is it? Right on this card. Kind of dark to read anything. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's step down the hall a bit under the light. Why, there ain't no writing on this card, you... <laughs> Oh, Got him, Hoppy. Uh, let him down easy, like. Drag him back there out of sight in this corner. No telling how many of his crowd are close by. He's heavier than a bucket of eels. And just as slippery, I'll bet. That's all right. Leave him there. Now, that door at the end of the hall looks like it might be the office. We crash in it, Hoppy? Not unless we have to. We better get up close and hear what we can. Then I'll know how to lay my plans. <laughs> If that 10,000 ain't a hill by tomorrow night, Anderson, you'll be heading for a boot of hill. I gotta have more time, Blackie. I'm collecting from you or from your old man. No, no, not my daddy to kill him. His heart ain't good. I'll get it for you. If you know why you owe this 10,000... You know darn well I never play cards. Somebody put something in the food. When I woke up, you were showing me this IOU. It's a sign by you. That means your old man has to pay. Yeah. If you go to my dead with this blackie... Yeah, what? I'll kill you. Are you no good? All right, all right, I'll get it for you. Yeah, I thought you would. But maybe you'd rather play it the smart way. Save yourself a lot of trouble. Save me from going to your park. I ain't stealing it. Of course not. Nothing like that. Your pa's run a herd of beefs to the railroad tomorrow. I'm going to put one of my boys on as a trail hand. What are you aiming to do? Then I'm going to call out that square. You mean Russell? I don't use that word. We just cut out a few hundred head. Run them up Ginger Creek a ways and your debt is paid. Well, let me think it over, Blackie. That thinking's all been done for you. From now on, it's action. And you'll go along with it. Well, Hoppy, you heard what's going on. Maybe Kittle was right. The boys turned bad too early to say, California. Well, don't it? You heard him say he'd help rustle his own paw's cattle. Maybe trying to spar for time. That boy's crowded right up against the fence. You sure hate to see Henderson selling out. Well, if my plan works, he won't sell out. And be careful what you say to Henderson. The ranch is just ahead. Lucky we beat the boy back here. Looks like a lot of action at the Henderson spread. Yeah. <laughs> Darned if Banker Kittle ain't right. He's rounding up that herd for the trail. And Henderson doesn't look very happy about it. Are you saying anything about the boy? Nothing to say. Maybe if we listen, Henderson will tell us the way things are going. Sure a fat-looking herd, Hoppy. Yeah, too nice to be selling. Well, 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 hop along, Cassidy. If you ain't a sight, good to see <laughs> And that old cowpoke, California. What <laughs> brings you around these parts? Hello, Henderson. Just dropped out the pair of respects. Well, it's a good thing you did. I don't think I'll be around after next week. Uh, uh, selling out? Yes, I guess I am, boys. Things won't work out like I thought they would. Uh, cattle look fat. Oh, taint that hoppy, dirty. It ain't money, it's something inside of me here. All busted up. Oh, sure, sorry to hear that, Henderson. There, there your soul knows this, hoppy, but I gotta tell somebody I'll bust. Oh, what's wrong? It's my boy. I had hopes he was carrying on. I planned to turn the ranch over to him day after tomorrow when he's 21. He's smart. He's been to school. What's wrong with the boy? He's turned bad on me. Been gambling, losing money. 
Once to five thousand and once to three thousand. Paid off and said nothing. Didn't want him to think I was crying. Maybe it ain't his fault. And he's old enough to know that from wrong. Of course, they made a big thing over him at the Black Deuce Cafe. And... Oh, yeah, that's Blackie Bates' place. Poppy, I'd kill that rattler if I thought I could help anybody. He ruined many a boy. I well, maybe there's a way with that gunplay, Henderson. And the law can't touch him. Every shady deal he's in on, it's done by his hands. He's always clear. Uh, Mr. Henderson, uh, when's the herd taken to the trail? It's ready now. Just got me a new trail rider. See if we can get them through without losing them like I done last year. Rustlers? Yep. Four hundred head. Never found hide nor hair of them. Suppose California and I ride trail with the boys. Nobody knows us, not even your boy. We could keep an eye on them. Say, would you, Happy? I'll pay you good wages. Oh, shucks, we don't want no wages. Not from you, Henderson. Sometimes there's more important things than money. Oh, say, there comes the boy now riding in. <laughs> Look at that kid. Straight as an arrow. Right like his old man. <laughs> Excuse me, Hopper. I know how you feel, Henderson. And remember, these things have a way of working themselves out. Got a good view up here. Right below is Ginger Creek. Boy, they're gonna cut out some of the herd. Well, the boy's riding along with that guard from Blackie's. The one we put to sleep. Yep, it's the same one. <coughs> Look, Hoppy, that sidewinder's cutting some out. Looks like the boy's helping him. There they go, turning up the creek. And the rest of the herd going straight ahead. Yeah, you can see nobody up ahead knows it. Oh, sure makes me feel bad, knowing that boy's a turning on his paw that way. Don't judge him too soon, California. Remember, the boy's desperate. Gambling that away, costing his paw thousands. Maybe he didn't gamble. Why, his own paw said he did. I'd like to take that blackie beach's neck in my two hands and twist till his eyeballs pop out. The varmint. Wouldn't help a bit. we got to take our time so we know which way to move. Time's awful important, Hoppy. You're right, California. We've let this go far enough. Now we got to get to that Henderson boy and work fast. <laughs> Stay close to these rocks, California. I'm staying out of sight. Maybe surprise them. We do look out for gunplay. That guard is a bad hombre. Oh, gosh. Lucky them cattle. Just as fat as butter. They'll bring a mighty high price. I think we can meet up with the kid around this bend. Great fun, huh? <laughs> well, if it ain't my friend with a message for Blackie, I was hoping I'd meet up with you again. Thought we'd look around for strays. Seem to be a lot of them. Wearing the brand over H brand. Kid. They take six guns off on these hoot owls and fetch them here while I cover them. I told you we'd get into trouble. Do like I say. Get. There. I got both of them. Throw them to me. Your little rustling job fell through. Huh. I'll be darned if it has. Ain't nobody knows about it but us four. Now, doggone it, fella. We just... What are we going to do, Lacey? Do? Well, that ain't hard to figure. Two of us come in here. You and me. And there's only two going back out. You and me. Before we continue, here is a word from your announcer.
Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Settles a Debt. Jackie Gates is still holding an IOU for $10,000 over the head of young Steve Henderson. Steve has become panicky for fear Blackie will tell his father about the affair and is working with Blackie's gunsel Lacey to rustle some of his own dad's cattle to square the debt. Hoppy in California know of this and ride to Ginger Creek where they find the cattle and Steve. But an alert gunman got the drop on Hopalong and is going to kill them to keep them quiet. Wait, Lacey. They might come back looking for me. If they heard the shot, we couldn't explain. Yeah, maybe you're right. I'll go up to the ridge and see if they've moved on. I don't like it, Lacey. It ain't what you like. You keep it coming like it. Killing's a hanging offense. Killing ain't in my line. How about rustling cattle? That ain't in my line either. For a fellow who doesn't do any killing and doesn't like rustling, you're mixed up in some pretty bad company, Steve. You know my name. And we know you're poor. He's a good man. Stop your talking. You sure is, Steve. Too good to be getting the deal he's getting. I didn't want to do this. Yeah? You've got to believe me. We know. You know. We was listening when Blackie Bates threatened to tell your pa about the $10,000. Um, we're here to help you, Steve. I never saw you before. I don't know you're not lying. Hop along, Cassidy, don't lie. Hop along? You are hop along, Cassidy? I heard my pa talk about you lots of times. You've got to make a decision, Steve. <laughs> my father hates me. Oh, go on it, Steve. He don't know such things. Your pa's proud of you. Or he wouldn't have paid off your other gambling debts and said nothing. Other gambling debts? I never owed a cent in my life. You sure about that? Sure as I'm here. I swear it, Mr. Cassidy. Yeah, how about the 10000 That's different. I'll die before I let Pa know about that. Yeah, I guess your Pa would rather see you that way, too, than doing what you're doing. What am I going to do? That's a decision for you to make. And you'd better make it fast. Here comes your pal. My mind's made up. When this Lacey gets back, I'm going to tell him. Better be ready for action, man. Be the sign of a human or animal. Lacey? Lacey, I ain't going through with it. Why, you snibbling little... <laughs> Look out, Steve. Give Hoppy room. Uh, I got a score to settle with you. <clears throat> Here's one for Steve. <clears throat> what are we going to do with him, Hoppy? I'll leave him where he is. Let him go back to Blackie Bates and tell him his scheme failed. Well, supposing he beats us back to town. Well, if he does, he can walk faster than we can ride. Get out of here. Horse will just go back to the livery stable. Then they'll come looking for him. By that time, I hope to have this whole mess cleaned up. Well, what about the herd this fellow cut out? They'll be all right back in the draw. We can get them any time. But right now, we're holding a meeting with Mr. Blackie Bates. Boy, we're, we're passing right by the Black Duke's hobby. I don't plan on going in the front door. Whatever you do, count me in, Mr. Cassidy. I will, Steve. I'll swing around back to the the shop and tie up. Yeah, you can see the light in Blackie's office from here. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I'm up and let's get out of sight. Sure feels good, Mr. Cassidy. What feels good? Feels good being a man instead of a cheater. I like to hear you say that, Steve. Everything seems so different now, thanks to you. I've got the courage to stand right up to Blackie Bates and have it out. I don't know about what Blackie won't clear you, Steve. Well, darn it, something's got to be done, Hoppy, and fast. Blackie's a pretty slick hombre. That's why he's never been caught at anything. His gunnies always do the job for him. And he always got a clean alibi. And we have to set a trap and hope he walks into it. Got an idea, Hoppy? Well, it's worth trying. But it means rough going for Steve. I ain't afraid of rough going. What do I do? you got to get Blackie mad. <laughs> that ain't going to be hard, Lou. I mean mad enough to do his own killing. Now, uh, California. <laughs> not me. I ain't going to be gunned down just... Wait a minute. Of course not, California. I want you to go in the black deuce with Steve. Uh, in the front? Yeah. Blackie never wears a six-gun in his office. You don't have to with them hired gunnies of his right outside his door. Are you sure about that? I know I'm right. He always hangs his holster and belt right back at his desk near the window. Steve, I want you to go right into Blackie's office and tell him you want to settle a score. Why, that kid ain't got a chance back there, Hoppy. Yes, he has. I'll be there, just outside the window. I'll back his hand. And then? Tell Blackie you don't intend to pay the $10,000. Yes, you know more than I do what you got up your sleeve. If you say to do it, I sure will. And remember this, the most important thing. Tell Blackie your pa won't pay it. 
And he isn't man enough to make you pop head. Darned if you ain't handin' Steve a main size dish there, Hoppy. And doggone if he ain't got his paw spunk. Uh, California, I'll take that six gun you took off that armor back in the draw. <laughs> Plum forgot I had it. Here. This gun's going to be important. Looks like any other old six gun. That's what I'm hoping. Now hurry up, it's getting late. And we gotta spring the trap tonight. <laughs> Mr. Kittle, something is wrong at the bank? You, uh, did you come over to the bank today as you said you would, Mr. Bates? Ain't made up of my cash. It's, uh, not the cash. It's, uh, this. What's that? A letter from the Gallup Mining Company offering you third interest in Gallup number three for 15000 Oh, can't that wait till the bank in hours of tomorrow? Oh, too late. Your answer must leave on the early stage. Yeah. Sure is worth the money. Who is it? Steve. What are you doing here? What's wrong? I ain't going through with it, Blackie. What are you? What? Now, now, Mr. Bates, he's only a boy. Tomorrow I'm not a boy. I'll be the owner of the Bar Over Each Ranch. <laughs> Kittle. I see you at the bank early in the morning. No. Kittle can hear this, too. I just want you to know I'm not paying off the $10,000, Blackie. Why? And my pa isn't paying it off, neither, because I don't know it. We see about that. And you ain't man enough to collect it from him. I'm a collecting that $10,000, or Boot Hill is going to have a new box. Boot Hill may get a new box, but neither pa nor me is going to be in it. Now, Mr. Bates, don't lay a hand on Steve. This is a one bit. I'm a collecting of myself, a personal. Suit yourself. But I ain't the crawling spook I was yesterday. Pawn me or bust this town wide open tomorrow. Why, you snake. Reach, Blackie. Reach. Why? Now look here, kiddo. You... I'm covering you to save you from the hangs. Not because I got any love for you. Now you go on, Steve. Get out of here and keep riding. <laughs> Gotta beat Blackie to the ranch, Mr. Cassidy. Well, the way he was raging past life ain't worth a nickel if we don't. Well, Blackie ain't past us on this road, that's for sure. I'm not letting anything happen to your pa, Steve. Not for anything in this world. He beats me how you can wade right into trouble like this, Hoppy, and always know just what to do. Guess it would be mighty risky for anybody else to take these chances. But no, it with you, things always seem to turn out. Wait a minute. Pull up the horses. Mm -hmm. Listen, you hear what I hear? Uh, I hear a horse, if that's what you mean. Riding fast. Yeah, too fast. Steve, is there any other road to your ranch? Why, no, this is the... Mr. Cassidy, there is another one. A shortcut that fords the stream. Come on. I forgot about it. Used to ride it as a kid. Oh, Mr. Cassidy. Easy, Steve. Just around this bend now. I think I've done Mr. Paul after all he's done for me. This is all my doing. No, Steve. This part of it is my plan. Oh, we don't even know it's Blackie. Shops, maybe it's just... Oh, we can jump this fence here. Come on, boy. Now cut through this grove. You lead the way, Steve. Hope you're right about things always turning out for me, California. I got my gun out, Hoppy. Well, put it away while you're riding behind me. There's Blackie's horse. Lead us to your pa's bedroom, quick. Oh, no. Back to hop along, Cassidy. Come on, Steve. Pa! Pa! Don't move. I got you covered. Drop that gun. Incarnation's going on here. Oh, 
Paul, you're alive. Put on the light, California. Hey, sure. Maybe then I can see what's going on. Ain't sure yet who shot who. Kittle. Why, it's Banker Kittle and... And Blackie. Yeah, Blackie's dead. I raced Blackie out here. I knew he was gunning for Henderson. What in blazes is all this about? First thing I knew, I heard some shots and... It was Blackie gunning for you, Henderson. I thought he'd gotten you for sure. How could he miss, Paul? How could you still be alive? Why, that rattler was a standing over you with a smoking gun when I shot him. Point blank range. I don't know how he missed you. Disappointed, aren't you, Kittle? California, keep your gun on our banker friend here. Well, sure, Hoppy. Now, see here, Mr. Kittle kept Blackie from shooting me back in town a few minutes ago, and now he say, Paul, you got no right to... No, Steve. Take a look at Blackie's gun here. You'll understand why your pa is still alive. Blanks. Yeah, blank cartridge was really in this gun. Blanky was shooting at your pa. Don't go on that sure was a lucky break. I reached in the window of Blackie's office and exchanged his gun for this one of Lacey's. Then you gave him a gun filled with blanks? Sure, and that's the one thing that has made Kittle's little scheme backfire. Say, I've taken about all of this slender... Furthermore, Kittle, I know you didn't race Blackie out to this ranch. You beat him here by several minutes. Why, I... I you I, waited I, in the next room for Blackie to arrive. Mr. Cassidy... How do you know that when we only just arrived? Because the room was filled with cigar smoke. And unless your pa here is taking up smoking. Oh, me? You bet your boots I ain't. Well, this is ridiculous. I shot Black. Yeah, uh, after you thought he had killed Henderson. Brett, Hoppy, this don't make sense. Kittle's been my friend for 25 years. Handled all my business. And stole money from you faster than you could make it. What? Me? You told Mr. Henderson that you paid off several debts to Blackie. What Steve owed for gambling. Thousands of dollars. That was a lie. And you knew that by tomorrow, unless you could get Henderson to sell out everything, Steve would take over and discover your thefts. I guess I'm kind of thick, but why did Kittle here gun down Blackie? Because Blackie and Kittle worked together to frame Steve. And Kittle wanted to get rid of him. This way, he could do it and be a hero. Well, I guess I might as well carry Blackie out. Yeah. Oh, oh listen clock. Eh? Midnight. Well, uh, what do you mean? Getting late? I mean, I'm 21. Doggone. I guess you are. <laughs> well, is that way to stop mine? Got to give you one again. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you don't, Mr. Henderson. You got to show respect to the new owner of the Bar Over H Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Steve, I never saw a boy become a man quite so quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I sure have, thanks to you. <laughs> Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy in California. These partners will be riding out again soon into another threatening episode, and we hope you'll be with us. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Hoppy Pays the Debt was written by Howard Swan. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.